Greetings. Um, it's my pleasure to join you all today uh, to discuss a research topic I've been working on for the past year and a half now, I would say, um, about how um, the World Trade Organization deals with cybersecurity concerns. Uh, now, this is a very broad topic, so today in this presentation specifically, we'll just focus on uh, cybersecurity insofar as it affects the international sale of goods and therefore restricting my analysis to the general agreement on tariffs and trade or the GATT. Um, I will be discussing two instances in which trade restrictions have been imposed on information and communication technology. Um, I will, um, and although these measures have never been formally challenged in the WTO dispute settlement system, um, I will proceed with with, with looking at these uh, examples as if they were a hypothetical dispute and accordingly uh, looking at how they would be justified under um, the exceptions in the GATT and even looking at uh, possible solutions elsewhere. For an example, resolving cybersecurity concerns under the TBT or Technical Barriers to Trade Agreement. Um, now, to begin with, uh, an important issue to address is that um, states will have various uh, policy considerations behind uh, restricting trade in ICT or information and communication technology products. And some of these considerations will conceal protectionist or politically motivated intentions. However, I do believe that cybersecurity is a growing concern and accordingly, I feel it's appropriate to deal with it as such, um, meaning that the WTO should address the concerns related to cybersecurity within the system instead of having uh, states resort to um, other recourses. Now, um, for the sake of argument, I will be dealing with these issues, even if they are at times of a political nature, uh, as if they were a genuine novel cybersecurity uh, concern. Um, so let's begin with looking at two particularly controversial measures that have affected trade in information uh, and communication. So the first of these measures has been uh, the banning the use of foreign equipment and critical infrastructure projects. And um, this concern was essentially raised by Australia in 2018, in which it banned the use of Chinese telecommunication equipment in building its 5G broadband network. Now, the ban was initiated amidst concern that because um, information would be traveling through this Chinese equipment, then the company might be compelled to hand over and gather that information to Chinese intelligence agencies. Um, the measure adopted by Australia, Australia has had a spillover effect. So we've seen um, the US, Japan, and New Zealand have all adopted similar regulations. Another issue uh, regarding trade in technological goods has been banning um, or imposing export restrictions on uh, information and communication technology components. So in 2019, the US added Huawei along with several of its affiliates to its entity list. And now what that does is, is that it bans US companies uh, from exporting any kind of items to, Chinese to the Chinese companies on the list over national security concerns. Now, why is this a problem? Now, um, the GATT agreement as part of the WTO framework uh, sets out a series of rules that um, seek to strengthen economic cooperation between states. And uh, it does so by eliminating uh, um, or reducing tariffs and non-tariff barriers. The aforementioned examples are all examples of non-tariff barriers that would violate the GATT. For an example, they would violate Article 1 on Most Favored Nation, Article 3 on National Treatment, and Article 11 on Quantitative Restriction. Naturally, a state will try to justify these measures under one or more of the GATT uh, exceptions, um, specifically because a lot of these states have adopted the measures under a national security rationale, Article 21 is 
of utmost importance here. And I think a little bit of background is necessary about Article 21. So um, the article has been the focal point of much debate and discussion about its justiceability and uh, appropriate standard of review. Fortunately, we have the Russia Traffic of Transit dispute, which is the first and currently the only WTO case adjudicating Article 21, in which the panel have um, kind of uh, clarified these concepts. So what the panel did in that case was divide the article into both objective and subjective elements. So while a WTO member has the right to self-judge um, what would be considered an essential security interest subject, they do so in good faith, um, a member must also adhere to an objective analysis of the facts under which these measures were taken. And here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So can we consider cybersecurity an essential security interest within the meaning of Article 21? And perhaps the best way to look at this is through Article 21b, subparagraph 3, in which it justifies measures taken at a time uh, during a time of emergency in international relations. However, in the Russia traffic of transit uh, dispute, the panel interpreted uh, emergency in international relations by reference to the concept uh, at a time it was developed in 1947 when the article was drafted. So um, the panel says that an emergency of an, an international relations is one that would be of comparative gravity to war uh, or one that would involve armed conflict, uh, some sort of heightened tension or general instability engulfing the state. Now, this concept would be difficult to apply to nowadays threats, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, when they don't necessarily have to um, become um, military or um, military of a mil military nature. Uh, on the contrary, they could be completely peaceful, but could have uh, a significant impact on a state's security. Um, another issue with applying the concept um, as defined by the Russia Traffic of Transit, Transit Panel is um, that they required chronological con concurrence between the emergency in international relations and the measures taken, uh, which is challenging uh, for issues related to cybersecurity because it basically relies on states taking preventive action. If states were not allowed to take action until a cyber attack or cyber um, um, breach happens, then it would be irrelevant. Um, and, and therefore, it is unclear if Article 21 would be able to allow for preventive uh, measures to be taken or precautionary measures in, in that sense. Um, another challenge in applying Article 21 would be uh, to determine the good faith of a WTO member in adopting these measures. Um, so the panel, although they recognize the self-judging nature of a part of the clause, they also require that um, it is subject to some sort of review of good faith in which a member should um, adopt these measures in good faith. And, and unfortunately, specifically in the examples I mentioned and the examples we've seen nowadays in um, banning or restricting information and communication technology is that it's also been, it's, it's often been of a political or punitive nature. So, which will make it particularly difficult to apply Article 21 on cybersecurity. And given the complexity of dealing with cybersecurity under the national security justification, um, I alternatively propose addressing um, the cybersecurity concerns under the TBT agreement, which allows states to adopt technical barriers uh, or your specifications to products imported into their country um, subject that they do so in a non-discriminatory way. And this is quite frankly perfect when it comes to cybersecurity and security in uh, technology because there are currently uh, several uh, systems um, or specifications where um, internationally recognized 
that do address um, security and um, cybersecurity and integrity of devices collectively with their networks, softwares, and systems. Uh, for an example, we have the NIST cybersecurity framework, uh, which is an extensive framework that deals with um, cybersecurity in products, services, um, different layers of technology. We also have the 2013 joint standards by the International Standardization Organization along with the IEC, um, which also talk about um, hardware and software security. Um, the NERC also has a set of standards for electric the electric power industry and ensuring security there. The problem with these standards is that states have not sat down and um, agreed on them collectively uh, altogether. So uh, certain members have adopted these regulations, but I think it is possible to kind of sit all the um, states together and have one specific standard um, adopted by um, in which all of them would be uh, able to implement. Um, I generally believe that states have a legitimate concern when they want to address cybersecurity uh, insecurities in information and communication products. However, states should be more concerned about how these products are being made instead of where and who are producing them. Uh, adopting international standards pursuant uh, and in accordance with the TBT would resolve a reasonable number of cybersecurity concerns and also do so within the existing WTO framework. Um, but this is still a work in progress and feed feedback is very much appreciated. Uh, I would like to thank you all for listening and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.